Okay, what's going on, everybody? Joseph coming your way. Are you ready for more stupid bowling opinions? All right. So this is a uh, so this is the follow up to my previous stupid bowling opinions, where I talk about every single pin you leave in bowling, how you leave it, what it could have been, how you cover it, and stuff. And I promised that I was gonna leave out the seven and ten pin for a different video because they do deserve their own video because. They are the most common single pins that any bowler leaves. So now we are going to cover the 7 and 10 pin. And what I'm probably going to do is in the future, I'm probably going to redo these to in to include, uh, you know, <clears throat> actual footage of uh, myself leaving all these single pins. But for now, we're going to have to make do with uh, just... Words on a screen. Presentation. So, this is pretty much listenable. You don't really need to watch this. So, there you go. Uh, a little bit of review from the last video. So, there are three. So, when you leave single pins, they're the sign of... Uh, like, like, single pins can be good shots. They can be bad shots, whatever. Uh, multiple pins, are, to me, are always bad shots. Like, there, there's no such thing as making a good shot and leaving a multiple pin like no you can think it's a good shot but whatever so there are three main components to a good shot a quality shot right did you hit your target was the front to back motion what you wanted was the left to right motion what you wanted and you know, all that stuff works together to create optimal ball motion and angle this way that they'll produce the power necessary to knock all the pins you need to knock down and it's like I said, I'm, I'm simplifying it a lot, but those are the main three. All right. And by the way, there's a reason I called this stupid bowling opinions, because I'm not a coach. I'm not a pro. I just have a piddly little 205 average. I'm just some 205, bo I'm just some 205 bowler. I'm not in any way, shape, or form an authority because I don't have the receipts to be an authority. I bowled, what, exactly one perfect game? It wasn't even... Uh, it wasn't even USB-C recognized. I don't have any 800 sets yet. I mean, yeah. I haven't won any PBA titles yet. Those are what... That's going to be another stupid bowling opinions video of mine. I'm going to talk about that quite a bit. Because there's a lot of coaches out here who don't have receipts. And that's okay. Everyone can learn from everybody. But it's not indicative of an actual coach. Anyways, here's how you rate your shot. So, if your shot was excellent or almost perfect, that means the ball moved exactly the way you wanted it to, and you hit your target to the board, you were on the right board with your accuracy, uh, and then you got, and they work away from down from there. Decent shot means you missed your target by, at most, three boards, but your ball moved kind of the way you wanted it to. And then... If your shot was meh, most single pins are meh shots, okay? Including, and especially, 7 and 10. It means you missed your target by, at most, 5 boards, or the, and the ball, uh, the motion was, usually, it was really bad uh, front-to-back motion. So, the ball either just skidded, or it hooked way too early, which means also moved way too much, that kind of stuff. And then, if you made a bad shot, you missed your target by at least five boards, and that's non-negotiable. Like, yeah. And again, if you want to make an adjustment off of a shot in bowling, you never make adjustments off bad or excellent shots. Unless, unless, it left a 7 or a 10. And I'm going to cover that. But it's okay to make adjustments off decent or meh shots. Or never, I'm sorry, with excellent shots, you never, I mean, you never make adjustments off bad shots. You just make a better shot. Excellent shots you can make adjustments off of, provided they didn't do what you want. They didn't give you the count that you wanted to get. Like, you didn't get the strike from it. Okay, now I gotta move. Now I gotta change my ball. Now I gotta change my hand position. Now I gotta throw it harder, loft it higher, or whatever the fuck. Or not loft at all. 
be a little earlier kind of shit. So how do you adjust? You rate your shot first. Was my shot excellent? Was it meh? Was it decent? Was it bad? See what happened, how it hit the pins, and then you adjust accordingly, right? All right, cool. So here we go. And also, my little rant about single pin spares. These are the free throws of bowling, okay? This, I got, you got this from the last episode too. And if you're a noob, you get salty because you're stupid. I don't mean, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but if you're a noob and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have left that four pin. No, bro, you hit the ball high as a kite. You deserve that four pin, and you should be lucky as fuck that you didn't leave the nine pin next to it. Leave the six pin coming high as a kite, coming through the nose, and you leave the six pin to go, and then you get upset about it, frustrated about it. It's like, bro, really? Dude, really? 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 That could easily have a four pin next to it. In fact, in all in all cases, in most cases, it should have a four pin or a seven pin next to it, you fool. <laughs> if you're intermediate, you're kind of indifferent to them. You know, you go like, all right, it's a free spare. But if you're advanced, like I'm trying to be, I'd call myself in between intermediate and advanced. You use them as information. You say, oh, my ball came in high and it left a eight pin. So I left a stone eight, or that's what they call it, a stone eight. It's not really a stone eight. It's more than likely it's a it's a high eight that had a little bit of deflection and your ball didn't hit to the eight pin, which it should when you get a perfect strike. So you leave that eight pin and you go, all right, well, let's see. Hmm, that kind of stuff. You try and make that adjustment off that. If you're a noob and you leave single pin, you hook at it like a dum dum. If you're intermediate, you usually hook at all of them except the six and ten. And with those, you just throw straight at because you know if you hook your ball at a six or a ten pin, then like the ball's gonna get away, or you're gonna miss wide and dump it in the channel. And if you're advanced, you throw you throw the ball straight at all of your single pins, no matter what. Like no matter what. Anyways, and conversion rates for single pins. If you track your single pin conversion rates, you will cover more spare. You will cover more single pin spares. What gets measured gets managed and gets improved. If you're a noob, you probably get less than 8 out of every 10 single pins you leave. If you're an immediate, it's in between 8 and 10 and 9 and 10, usually about 85%. If you're advanced, then you usually cover, like, for every 20 you leave, you will cover at least 18. And, you know, if, if you're at bowling, like, an eight-game sweeper and you leave, like, 24 single pins, and you've only covered, like, 19. Like, other bowler, and you're, like, really good and really established, so other bowlers will know, oh, okay, this dude had a bad day because you should have covered, like, at least 23 of those. So, there you go. Okay, now... Corner pins. We all love corner pins, right? By the way, this is from the this is from right-handed perspective. So yeah, just sw switch everything around if you're left-handed, I suppose. Here's the seven pin. So the seven pin. Seven pins are usually made. Are usually left. They're left in two ways. No matter how, usually no matter how good your shot was. So you got the shaker seven. So shaker seven means you hit light, possibly even a little bit flat as well. Uh, but usually most of the time it has it, it's a light hit, which has a lot of power to it. But you just maybe missed your target wide by a little bit. I mean, and in some rare cases, actually, yeah, you'll leave like a, you'll, you'll hit the pocket flat and then you'll get the 10 out which is weird but then you, the, the the you know you'll get a bunch of shrapnel around the seven pin and it just won't go down what could a shaker have been what what yeah what could have what could you have left instead of instead of the shaker seven any bucket variation two four five eight two four 
two four five two five uh two eight there's no way you oh, yeah, two eight yeah two eight I could see that four eight in some weird very in some weird really weird uh circumstances you could have also left a lily variation if your ball was like really like laboring and just like just kind of not have if you didn't have the power for that what's a lily that's a five seven ten so you could have left the five seven five ten a five on its own sometimes and then of course you could have had the nine pin next to it and yeah if you're leaving a shaker seven and you leave like two of those in a row you're probably lucky because the next one you'll probably get will probably have the 10 pin next to it because it's a very light hit that's possibly flat so yeah Sweep sevens. That's where you go into the pocket and you hit it pretty high flush and the head pin just just it literally sweeps right in front of the seven pin. That's what they call a sweep seven. And bowling is a game of inches. You don't know that because you're standing sixty feet away from the pins and those pins are a few inches away from each other. So, what you don't know about sweep sevens is that most of them are high. Most of them could have been a four, four seven in some cases, a four nine for sure, a four nine ten even if you're really unlucky, uh, or even a big four variation. There's a lot of times where I'll throw the ball and I'll get a sweep seven, and then for some reason, the six pins still there. What? That's because I hit high as a kite. And it's kind of unfortunate. That's how it goes. Uh, here's how to get shaker sevens out. So, a shaker seven to me, again, this is stupid bowling opinions, but to me, whenever I leave, whenever I see one of my teammates or someone on my, on my pair uh, leave a shaker seven, my eyes see what other eyes won't see, right? Especially when it comes to why we need... That's why coaching is at such a premium in bowling. Uh, my teammate could leave a shaker seven, and he could say, oh, man, I made an awesome shot there, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I would say, yeah, you made a decent shot, but it wasn't excellent, you know, because you were a little bit wide. Maybe by, like I said... Like it says in the description, uh, half to one board, because a shaker seven is likely a miss right. Sometimes it's right what you want, and it just maybe your ball uh, skidded and flipped too hard. Um, I see a lot of skid flip, uh, a lot of skid flip rotation, uh, got a lot of skid flip motion bowling balls that they hook like really late. And that'll leave a five seven or a, that'll leave a shaker seven because there's like too much energy into the pocket, and it's a and it's a light hit, so that kind of stuff. So what I usually do to get the shaker seven out is to I'll move my eyes right by either half a board. Oh, I'm sorry, my feet. Sorry about that. Whoops. Actually, feet plus eyes. I'll use my feet. I'll, I'll move my feet and my eyes right by, I'd say, like half a board to one whole board. Uh, sometimes even weirder cases, I'll move it like a little bit, like, like three quarters of a board. And then that usually gets my ball to roll into the pocket very good if I hit my target the same way. And I'll get the, I'll get the uh, 7 out there. Here's how to get a sweep 7 out. So, oh, damn. Look at me. Putting in inconsistent in, uh, or in, uh, information that's not complete. And not being able to spell eyes. One board left. So I'll get this. I'll try to get the sweep seven out by moving my feet or my eyes. So, 
Usually it's my feet and my eyes. Half a board to one board left to create a very, very little more angle. Not, not a ton, or else I'm going to miss right. Especially if you're on a sport shot. Sport shot, you don't need to move. The more you move, the more you're going to get in the weeds on that kind of stuff. Especially earlier in the day. Later in the day, yes. Then you got to jump, right? Or on a house shot. We'll say on a house shot. So let's say I left the sweeper seven on a house shot. That means I say, okay, I got to create a very little more angle. Okay? And here's the deal with other seven pins, other corners and stuff. If you leave it in a different way, like let's say you go through the nose and you leave a seven or uh, it's really high to where it could have been a split or four pin. Let's say you break, let's say you break apart the uh, a a big four variation. Like you left a four, uh, let's say you left a six and ten, and then you get the six and ten out. It's not a good shot. Splits are never good shots. Okay, washouts are never good shots. Uh, or it's a good shot with a bad result because your shot is based on what you uh, intended anyways. So, you know, if your ball's online, then it jumped. Okay, well, that's good shot, bad result. But most of the time, especially if you're on a house shot, if you leave a seven pin in a different way, you probably didn't leave it. But it's probably not a good shot. So, yeah, that's the seven pin, everybody. Here we go. The 10 pin. Everybody love all right here nerds love the 10 pin. You love the 10 pin? I love the 10 pin. <laughs> okay. If the and honestly, learning about the 10 pin is especially important for bowlers like me who don't have a lot of rotation uh, compared to other bowlers out there who they throw with no thumb or with two hands or they have a lot, just a lot of rotation because they learned that way. If you have low rotation, low meaning under like 350 RPM, you're going to be leaving this pin a lot. Why? Because if you don't have a lot of rotation, you don't have a lot of power. So, and both of these two 10 pin variations are the result of deflection, okay? A flat or, pla or plaque 10. This is where the six pin doesn't hit the 10 when you, your ball goes into the pocket. It just kind of goes into the gutter and just stays there. That's a flat, or a flat plaque, weak, yeah, we'll say here. Flat, weak, yeah, a flat or a weak or a plaque 10. That means that your ball rolled out, it deflected against the rack a lot, and you're honestly, it's not a good shot because your front to back motion sucked shit. Okay? <laughs> so it, that's, a, that's a meh shot at best. It's meh, all right? It wasn't even decent, okay? No, well, it, it could have also been really bad because let's say there's not a lot of oil on the lane, right? And let's say you didn't throw the ball hard enough or you didn't loft it high enough and your ball just kind of went to a roll at like the down lane markers, which is horrible. You never want your ball to go, or, or not even to the down, uh, like halfway between the arrows and down lane markers. That's, like, god-awful. Like, <laughs> like, you never want to do that unless you can loft your ball to that area. And then it'll just have all of its power there. And you have to loft the ball really high to do that. I'll explain the difference between high loft and far loft in a different video for sure. And it's in a different stupid bowling opinion. And this stupid bowling opinion is... That, that's going to be a very controversial stupid bowling opinion. But trust me, it's going to be one you will not want to miss. Hopefully I'll have footage by that time. So, yeah. That means, so, a, pla a, a week 10 
I'll use those terms interchangeably. That means your ball rolled out like crazy, it deflected against the rack like crazy, and it's a bad shot, or it's a mess shot. At the best, it's meh. Usually, it's a mess shot. Most of the time, it's a bad shot because you're, you either missed like crazy and you got lucky and you hit a nice little dry, dry patch, again, on a house shot. So let's say you're aiming at, uh, let's say you're crossing 10 at the arrows on a house shot and you're at like 5 at the break. Let's say you miss all the way right. And let's say the lanes are like cliffed, like like insane, insanely cliffed, right? And you miss all the way to the right, okay? And it holds just enough to where you're not leaving that 3, 6, 10, but it didn't hold, uh, it held too much to where it just kind of laid into that pocket just rolled right in that's not a good shot so yeah it could have been a, a variation of a lily because so you could have had a five pin next to it you could have uh, left it with a seven uh oh that should say and seven ten whoops yeah. seven ten could have had an eight pin next to it could have been five seven, uh, stuff like that. Flat tens means you need if you leave if you're leaving flat tens, you need to make an adjustment, like the next frame, okay. Like, cause that means that your front to back motion is not what it needs to be, right? Now the wrap ten, wrap ten requires a little bit a, a lot more explanation, so. In a wrap 10, that's where your 6-pin, like, will wrap around the 10-pin. Like, will literally, like, it'll go around the 10-pin, hit the wall, and then it'll go uh, to the backdrop. And if you are lucky, it'll touch the 10-pin and get it out. Usually, you're not lucky, and it'll just wrap around the 10-pin, get in front of the 10-pin, hit the wall, and then go into the back. And the wrap 10, to me, from what I've seen, it's usually a light fluff shot. But it could also be something different. And they're related to the pin deck. And different from a flat or weak 10, flat or weak 10 is a, that's like a mech shot at best, okay? A wrap 10 can be a decent shot, or it can even be excellent. It can even be a close to perfect shot. Should you, do you, is it permissible to get mad at wrap 10s? Yeah, I'd say. Because that means you're, that means like your ball was like literally inches away from striking when it went into the pocket. Okay? Here's the issue with wrap 10s is that they're, like I said, they're related to the pindex. So, an AMF deck will leave a different pin, a different uh, wrap 10 than a Brunswick deck, okay? So let's say you're at an AMF house and you leave a, and you leave a, whoops, let me get rid of that. Okay, let's not do that. Let's do this. Let's put it, like, over here or something. I don't know. What happened? There we go. <laughs> okay. So let's say you're at an AMF house, right? And you're bowling on an AMF deck. And you hit and you hit the uh, pocket, like, high flush. And you leave a wrap 10. It might be because the rack is a little different than the Brunswick one that you're bowling on. You know what I mean? So it's different, you know? That kind of stuff. Or I mean light flush. Say you hit light flush at an AMF on an AMF deck, you know, and you leave wrap ten, but in your Brunswick house that you bowl league at, if you hit high flush, you'll get the ten out. You know what I mean? Like the six will knock out the ten. So there's different ways to deal with it. Okay. Here's how I got flat ten out. In order to get a flat ten out, you need to improve your front back motion. Like, a, a flat 10 means it's weak, and you, your ball did not roll with power at all. 
And you can accomplish that by a whole bunch of ways, okay? There's a lot. I mean, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of different, um, adjustments you can make off of a flat 10 that will get it out, but they're, they, they all come back to improving front back motion. So that's what you need to keep in mind. Okay. And again, leaving wrap tens out, you need to understand what the, how the, how the deck is like, how the deck dictates it okay and that's difficult to explain but whatever but in my experience if you're in an amf deck uh and you go light flush then then you've then you're gonna leave a wrap 10 but if you go high flush then you'll get it out in brunswick decks it's the opposite uh you want to go if you go high flush on a brunswick deck you're probably going to leave the uh, wrap 10. But if you go light flush in a Brunswick house, you'll leave, you'll usually get the 10 out because the pins will fly around a little more. That's usually how it goes. Uh, is that always how it is with Brunswick houses? No. With AMF houses, you hit the, if you hit the pocket high, really high, you're, you're going to get everything out almost all the time. It's ridiculous. My highest sets actually were bold at an AMF house over in Boynton Beach uh, in South Florida a few years ago. I shot like a, my highest set was like 778 and the majority of my strikes were like really high. Like that's just how pins work in AMF houses. Really weird. Also, it also, uh, the surfaces, uh, have a lot to do with it as well so there you go that's my presentation on the corners hope you enjoyed this hope you enjoy my stupid bowling opinions uh again once i get some better technology some edit good editing technology and stuff and i'll be able to actually put in footage of like what i mean and whatever then it'll be a little bit better, but until then, you have to deal with this way. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one, which is uh, how I got out of my bowling slump. Because it's an interesting story, and it's awesome, and I want to talk about it. And I'm probably going to shoot that one, that video, right after this. So I will see you in that video. That one's going to come out a little bit later than this one. So I'll see you in that one later on. Take care, and thank you for listening.